Robo Papa. Uh, some of you guys know my computer actually crashed and I had to build a new one. So this one is the Roswell Tower and I'll post a spec on what's actually in it. Um, but it's not going to be a build of a, a PC. But I want you to see there's uh, some LEDs over here and I was thinking well you know maybe it's time for me to actually put some LEDs on my working uh, desk as well. As you can see right now it's got nothing in it except some uh, you know USB holders and over there the blue thing is actually a USB um, connector so a couple of months ago I actually purchased from uh, Radio Shack this one meter uh, tricolor and I was thinking well I have three of those so it would be nice to actually use it right now with the Arduino and uh, have some LEDs going on the bottom of the disk and that way it can be like uh, pretty cool so that's what we'll do today I'll show you uh, how I did it and how this actually works and in the end how it's uh, installed so let's get started All right so I have over here um, a zip file that I found that comes from um, the Radio Shack website I don't think the Radio Shack wrote it but they published it there and I'll post this link um, on my website because I think uh, things a little bit has changed now with uh, Radio Shack uh, closing. So let's look on the um, on the strip one meter PD. Um, we'll see what they're doing over there. So you can see over here um, we have some macros depending on which board you're actually looking. So we will look on the Uno because that's what we're using, and then just a couple of definition of setting the bits to zero once. And then we have setting the pins uh, output for the DDRC, which is really the um, all the analog um, outputs. Um, then we have some ROMs over here, which is basically defining what color and to which um, LED. So every um, meter, um, which is three feet, uh, approximately three feet, um, we have 10 LEDs. So it's going on 10 by 10, that way we can turn the first one and then the nine, the rest nine will be off. Turn off the first one, turn on the second one and then the rest off, etc. cetera. Um, some of those ROMs, some of those ROMs are actually going to be um, different patterns um, and it will just go through them. The The setup itself is just um, setting up some uh, the, the pinouts and then resetting um, the LEDs themselves and then in the loop we can see that we're running this function which all it does is just running this pattern and it tells us how, how many LEDs and how long is actually to wait um, and we go through all of the red blue green and then the comment and then for until we stop actually the the code it will do the rainbow for 10 LEDs and waiting 70 uh, milliseconds so let's take a look at this uh, send one meter pattern and we'll see what we're doing over here. So we're getting the data, which is the, which are the ROMs, the number of LEDs, which is the pattern number, and then the frame rate, which is basically how long we want to delay. And we go through that uh, with the four loops uh, because we know we have 10 LEDs. So we know that it's 10 by 10 over here, or at least this pattern. And we know that maximum is 10 and we will loop through those and then every loop we actually will um, disable the interrupt do the data um, we we'll send the data to um, our strip and then we enable the interrupts again uh, the PGM read the word uh, near just basically reading um, a double word um, around this because we actually dealing with 24 uh, bits um, each uh, color has eight bytes, so really we need a uh, double word to read it. And then we will send this data um, to that strip. So let's look at this function, which really all it does, and we can take a look on the on the uh, PDF file later. It's running for 24 times because each bit is uh, we have each color has uh, eight bits, so RGB eight bits is 24. And we'll just, if the data um, and J, so if in the position um, J, um, it's one, 
then we'll turn it on for a certain amount of uh, milliseconds and then turn it off. Otherwise, we'll send a different one, which basically tells it like that it's not on. And that's how we um, sending the data to the data strip because it has a microchip that basically kind of getting the data and pushing it forward to the next LED. So you can daisy chain even those one meters um, strips. So let's run this program real quick and we will see what um, what it does. Um, so you can see right now on the screen um, that it's starting to um, go through all the um, patterns as we talked about and um, so it's doing the the green and then it will do the blue so you can see over here and then it will do the red and then it start doing like the um, it will do the white and then it will start doing the comments which in the end it will do the the rainbow um, so those are the different comments and here's the rainbow. Um, so we basically can use this one to um, follow up of what I wanted to do, which really is just having those LEDs um, with um, a couple of, of pods that way I can change the value for RGB to the color that I want to. Um, so if we think about it, that we'll need like three pods um, to be able to um, set the, the colors. And then when I decide what it is, then I can um, apply that to the code. So let's look at this code right now. All right, so this is what I um, created. It's still using the same uh, base as what now I showed you in the previous demo. So I left the copyright stuff for the radio check over here. Um, I removed the, the Mega because I'm just using the Uno. Um, and you can see the ROMs are actually not here either um, because now we're only looking on, uh, I'm looking for a single um, RGB value that will follow for the, all, the, all the LEDs. And the way we I decide for the RGB is by having uh, pod uh, values that will come in. So I declaring over here the RGB um, potentiometers. Um, the final value is what actually needs to be sent to the LED um, and that will propagate to all of them. The setup is still is a little bit uh, different. Uh, we're still doing the reset over here uh, but I'm not using the, the pin out over here because now my potentiometers are actually sitting on some of the DDRC, um, so I cannot just set them up to um, like this. Um, so that's why I decided to not use this uh, macro. Uh, the pin mode A0 is output that will be basically the pin out, the, the data output uh, from the Arduino to the LED strip. So that will be your uh, green wire, um, at least in my case. Um, because it's a 24-bit, um, you know, we need to know which value comes first, second, and the third. And that's where I'm doing it over here. So the first eight bits are the R value. The second eight bits are the blue value. So the red value, the blue value, and the last eight bits are the green value. So I'm reading the potentiometer uh, values into the green, blue, and red value. And I'm mapping those because it's coming from 0 to um, 1,023. I'm mapping them to 0 to 255. Those are the two, um, the eight bits, basically. And I'm going to do the same for the, the green, the blue, and the red. And what I do over here is I basically have... Um, my temporary value uh, which I'm reading and the red value I'm just reading it as it is the blue value I'm shifting it 8 bits to the left so that way I can have the red the blue and then the green value I'm shifting it 16 bits 
which is going to be over here. And I have to make these as unsigned long, otherwise it will try to read it and it will have overflow of the integer uh, value. Uh, this is just leftovers of my debugging. Um, then I'm checking to see if the final value and the temporary value that I just uh, read over here, the final value is basically declared over here as zero. If they are not the same, I'm assigning it to the final value. That way I can only send the, like send a, a new data um, to the, the strip um, when it is changed. And I'll do it like that. So when they are not the same, I'll update the strip. That way you don't constantly updating it. So I created the send same color pattern and passing in the value. Um, the reason I'm having over here 20 is I'm going to daisy chain two one meter together, which give me 20 LEDs. And then I will have another one meter by itself, which will be fine to send 20 of those. Uh, 20 values to it, it will just, because it's the same color, you will not actually notice it. But then the second, the, the two meter one will actually be able to propagate all the way to the end. So sending the same color pattern function is very similar to what we saw before with the, with the ROMs, disabling the interrupts, looping through um, the values that we have, so whatever we passed over here, and then we're sending the RGB value into this send, uh, strip. We enabling the interrupt and then delaying for this frame rate over here, which is 70. So very similar to what the function was before, just now it's sending only one um, RGB value. Send strip is still the same way, uh, haven't touched that. So once again, sending the data for a certain amount of time, the, the nope is basically uh, no interrupt operation. Um, which basically wasting some um, cycles within the microcontroller and then we're sending the data zero otherwise to basically make it low uh, we're sending it like that and that's basically it the only other thing is that the reset uh, strip I'm looping through 20 values and sending zero to each one of them and that will turn off the, um, the LED um, strip so Let's uh, go to the other screen and uh, we'll see how it works. All right, so I have my Uno over here connected with uh, with a strip. Um, it's a little bit less than one meter because the first three uh, were um, dead on arrival. Um, the first three LEDs, so I basically shorted, so there's only seven um, LEDs in here. But I'm okay with that. It's, I have, like I said, I have on two more meters uh, with it. So I have the, the strip over here that it's connected with the wires. Um, the red the, and the black are basically the positive in the ground. And then in the middle over here, um, you can see there's the, the green um, wire. Um, and it's connected right now to my um, benchmark, uh, the, the power supply. And it's running on around 12 volts and it's drawing uh, 0.18. Um, amps, milliamps, um, or 0.18, sorry, amps, not milliamps. Um, and as you can see, I have my uh, pods over here that basically going to control each color. So if I'll basically set everything to zero. So right now you can see that the LED itself is turned off. So let's start um, playing a little bit. This should be the blue. So if I'll turn it all the way up, we're having only blue light. If I'll turn the, this one on, so we have the green. And then if we'll turn the other one, we'll have the red. So it's actually going R, G, B. Red, green, blue. And that's how I can actually play a little bit with the color to whatever um, color you know you like and um, how it, whatever you want it to be. If I turn all of these on, so the RGB, then I'm getting the white one. So um, very regular RGB values that uh, you can play with. 
So the next thing I'm going to actually um, install it on um, um, basically put it on, on my desk. Um, one thing that I also did is I went to Thingiverse and um, I just printed a simple um, case for the Adreno. That way you can actually sit in here and uh, be enclosed. Um, like I said, I also daisy chained um, to one meter. So I have basically that one over here. That way it can fit at my desk. And you can see that over here. Um, I basically took the end, the beginning of the first uh, one meter and connected it to the end over here. Um, so if I'll, I can plug this one in. And there you go, now I have the colors over here as well. Um, so yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically put it underneath my desk and we'll see how it looks like. All right, so I installed the LEDs, as you can see over here. And looks pretty, pretty nice, at least in my opinion. The Arduino is basically hidden uh, somewhere over here and if I'm getting tired of this color you can change it with the pods so that's it guys uh, let me know what you think um, leave a comment below um, if you have any questions or uh, comments and as always uh, don't forget to subscribe that way you can get a uh, notification on uh, upcoming videos thanks guys